I'll wager there are two reasons why you're watching this video. Either you got absolutely baited by whatever masterpiece of a thumbnail I created, or you want to learn more about Legends of Runeterra, the digital collectible card game made by Riot Games. Whoa, easy there now. I understand that simply mentioning Riot Games can trigger a number of negative responses, but besides the lore, units, spells, champions, setting, and everything else in the game, Legends of Terror have absolutely nothing to do with League of Legends. Greetings everyone, my name is Reynolds, and now you will join me in a journey where I will attempt to convert the remaining Bastion of Apes still playing Hearthstone, or accept that some people like to spend $100 every three months to get new versions of their favorite fish frog. Welcome to my Legends of Terror review. Seeing as I have most likely already opened the floodgates, we might as well begin with this part. Is Legends of Terror better than Hearthstone? Well, you see, that is actually a discussion that will need a lot of thought and argument put into it. So I'll let someone else do that. What I will say is this. Do you prefer to get absolutely fucking random ass cards for different classes you might not even play? Or would you rather be able to choose the specific class you get cards for? Do you like the idea of earning upwards of 10 packs of cards for simply completing your daily quests every week? Or would you rather earn 10 gold every time you win free matches? How about gameplay that is strongly focused on giving players the opportunity to interact with each other after every single move? Or perhaps you prefer watching your opponent slowly play all the pieces of Exodia in their hand while you sip on brick juice. If I haven't convinced you yet, then I don't think you deserve this game anyway. Legends of Runeterra is a fucking masterpiece in dealing with all the biggest issues that people tend to have with the CCG genre. Loot boxes? Fuck that. If you want a card so bad you can't wait to earn it, you straight up just buy that motherfucker. None of that having to open a glorified slot machine hoping that the right card show up. No story and a lack of interest for characters? Well, Legends of Runeterra made me care about a peasant girl that was never mentioned in the lore before, and now I am ready to throw all the money I own at my screen to make her a champion in League of Legends. And finally, the gameplay. If this was an actual review, I would spend a copious amount of time giving examples on how the many opportunities for interaction with your opponent makes for an exciting gameplay loop. When you play a card, your opponent gets to play a card. When you cast a spell, your opponent gets to cast a spell. Did my opponent just pass the turn expecting me to play a certain card while holding another card in their hand that would work perfectly as a perfect counter to my plan or is their plan to make me think they know my plan so that I second guess the plan and make myself believe that they have figured out my plan? This makes for a very compelling gameplay that lets you strategize on multiple levels to try and come up with the best way to achieve success with your given decks against your opponents. Whoa! Better throw in some more memes before this turns into an actual review. I like this. This is cute. <laughs> Now that all the Hearthstone players have either left or are busy typing angry comments below, let's talk about how the game actually works. To start off, you need to craft a deck. You could take the advice of the card wizard, who apparently needs to make people know he can swim so badly that he used it as the name for his channel? Or you can craft one yourself, only to go on a losing spree and then go listen to the man who is clearly not swimming talk about how to build a deck. Whichever option you choose, you get to pick from 9 different regions to fulfill your darkest desires. Damasia are for the people who like knights, who are actually super fucking racist, and I am fairly certain most of them have a swastika tattooed under all that armor. Except for Sifra, of course, she can't possibly be evil. Noxus, the so-called evil faction, but all I see is a country that values the strong and independent. Oh, what's that? They invaded Asia and lifted a ruined mess? Huh, I guess these guys are pretty evil. Ionia, if you're a weep, you already knew you are gonna be playing this region. Freljord, it's like Scandinavia. But unlike me, these people do not have to pay 48% in taxes. Pildover and Song, apparently they have a pop star who built her floating stage out of the corpses of crystal scorpions? Also, they have a meth lab in the basement. Bilchwater. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villa awooga. The Shadow Isles. Spectres, horrendous creatures, effigies of war, and a hot ghost dude? Shurima. 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 And finally, Targon, where they worship things that ordinary humans do not understand. Combined, these regions have a total of 890 different cards, so don't you fucking dare tell me you have to play at Cirarelia because it's the only thing that it works. While you're playing, your sole goal is to destroy the enemy's ring pop by dealing damage to it. To do this, you can summon loyal and devoted followers who are willing to die if you ask them to. Then, by smart 
currently using those followers to take favorable traits and casting spells to get desired outcomes, you will slowly but surely make your way towards victory. Or you can do as I've said before and just play as Sir Aurelia. But I better not see your name in the comments and queue up against you because I swear to god I will hire a 14 year old Indian kid to track down your IP address so I can get dog poop that sets itself on fire shipped to your house. I am somewhat of a connoisseur when it comes to art myself, and I am very pleasantly pleased to say that Legend of Rune Terror got some dank, sick art. When you play the card, you see a cute little elephant enjoying its life, but when you go to view its full art, you can see it's about to be fucking murdered by a dragon. Every single card in the game has this level of detail, all thanks to six bottles of Russia's finest alcoholic drink. Warning! This next part of the video will make you cream your pants if you enjoy seeing 2D character animation. You all knew this part of the video was coming, much like me when I'm watching Swain level up. Every champion card in the game has two states, their virgin unleveled state and their chat leveled up state. For the next few seconds, I'm gonna put all the memes and haha funny joke parts to a halt and let you watch a few of my favorite champion level up animations. The sound design and effects for non-champion level ups are also excellent. Behold the sun's holy light. And with that, I think I am done talking about Legends of Rune Terror. It's time for my final conclusion. Legends of Rune Terror is the most video game digital card game out there and puts the competition to shame by showing that there is no need to be greedy when it comes to microtransactions that affect gameplay. For my final score, I give Legends of Rune Terror 7.5 Rule 34s out of 10. The game is overall great, although I do have some issues with champion balancing. If you're interested in giving it a try, it's absolutely free and as I have mentioned, very rewarding for new players. Thank you to my Patreon members, Mr. Oz and Meme King for helping me fund the anti-loot box union. You can become a member yourself today to receive updates on videos, sneak peeks and exclusive art. Join me next time to learn more about how a robot samurai lost his masturbation arm and how he copes with it. My name has been Reynolds and until I see you again, I hope you have a wonderful time. If Shivana is half dragon and her dad was the dragon, does that mean her mom took fat dragon dick? <laughs>